Hello, the Form Tyson video, and in this video, we'll talk about using Stripe for recurring payments and then push to Salesforce. So, if you've got Stripe integration and you want to push the data after payment into Salesforce, then this is the video for you. All right, let's get started. What we'll do is um, let's create some fields like full name. Let's get an email. And then let's get what we call a price element. And we'll pretend this is a donation form and someone's donating us some money. So let's call this donation. And I'm going to tell you how this works. If I take you into Salesforce and I click a new contact, I'm going to show you the basic premise of how these recurring payments are going to work. What's going to happen is in, in this one, we'll just focus on creating the record, but then I'll show you how to update it as well. Um, and I'll show you the basic premise behind it. And in this one, what we'll do is we'll create a donation form where let's just say I commit to 100 pounds of donation. My next question I'm going to get asked is how many months can I keep that commitment? So I can say, actually, you know what, for every month for next 12 months, I want to donate 100 pounds per month. I can even say, you know, for the next two years, I'd like to commit £100 per month. So that's all that's going to happen. <coughs> and if I get rid of this, click cancel. Um, and then we go back to the form builder, we'll build this. We'll say donation. Uh, actually, we'll just call this donated amount. Amount. And then what I'll do is I'll get a numeric field here. Um, actually, a drop down would be better. Let's get a drop down. And then we'll just call this field from Salesforce donation commitment months. Donation commitment months. Obviously, you can have it for whatever you wish, really. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so we'll do, we'll do three, six, nine twelve and then what we'll do is we'll finally add a submit button in here and we'll set this up next thing you need to do is go into the form and make sure your payment integration is enabled enable payment integration configure my currency is going to be pound I need to amend that in here. Done. And then back in my payment mode, pound sterling and recurring payment is selected. You can select daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Quarterly is not available. It's only supported for payment hub. So I'm just going to choose monthly. But for normally, you'll have daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly available. So we'll select monthly and we'll call this donation subscription. And then I'll go back into um, my subscriptions. These are all my existing subscriptions there. So I'm going to unsubscribe these because I'll show you how this process works from scratch. Cool. So that's done. If I just quickly refresh this. <coughs> all right. So we've got one more subscription. Let's cancel this. All right. Gone. And if I now refresh it, I should have no subscriptions underneath. Great. Next thing you need to do is once you're in here and you've selected all the stuff, click next and you can choose, um, you can say donation commitment for every, uh, so for the three months, how, how many payments would you can say, actually, I want to take 300, 3000 per month. Here you can say, actually, I just want to take 9000 per month for the next six months. So you can really get, um, quite funky with all these options here available. For now, I'm just going to select the donated amount and uncheck the commitment months um, value here. Click next. And then you need to set your private and public key here. You must set up your webhook settings. I'll show you how it's done. So you copy this URL, go into the uh, Stripe configuration, click on developers, webhooks, and you can see I've got a couple set up here, this one like for example, but I'm going to delete it and I'll show you how it's done. And you can add endpoints, paste your URL here, 
and then you can select events that you want pushed back into um, Salesforce or, or the form builder. The ones I want is invoice <coughs> failed and invoice succeeded, payment succeeded. I want to know if the payment has been succeeded or failed. We'll add an endpoint. Okay, so all done. And what now we'll do is we'll go back to the form builder and here we need to make sure you understand what the limit charge mode means. And what this means is this, that if I select, for example, if I don't, if I select this and I don't use the form element, I know that, for example, if I was to donate hundred pounds for the next 12 months and I've committed to that, I can just say the number of charges will be 12 months. However, we've given options like three, six, uh, nine, and 12. So it's not a static value anymore, it's a dynamic. So for that, we will check what's called use form element and we'll choose the drop down, which is the donation commitment months. And then if you'd like to split total, we'll talk about that later. For now, it's unchecked. You don't have to worry about this for now. Click apply, and then that's that. Next up, we'll set up our Salesforce integration. We'll click push. We know we're pushing into our contact. And we're just going to create a contact for now. And payment integration is enabled. It must all be enabled, otherwise it will not work. Now we'll just map our fields. So we'll quickly go back to form mapping. We'll say first name, first name, last name, last name, email, email. And then donation amount will be donation amount. And then donation commitment will be domain donation commitment. And from here on, you can pass the parameters as well. So you can say, actually, I want to pass some parameters um, into my customer, like a customer ID, and you can really configure if you wish as well. Uh, I'm not going to map this. I'll show you how to map it the other way around. So let's do customer payment customer ID. And here now I can choose my payment parameters. Um, and for example, um, I may want to pass the submission ID. So you can just choose ID here. And what I'll do is for now, I'll just choose uh, status. Uh, or maybe do I want to see if... Uh, okay, for now, we'll just push through ID, for example. That will do for now. So I'll show you what I've mapped so far. These are all the fields I've mapped. Last name, first name, email, ID, donated amount, donated commitment months. Click apply and finish. Now we're ready to test. So if I go into preview now, and just wait for my form to load, my form is now loaded. I can type in Joe blogs, and I can say Joe at donation.com. And the pounds I'm going to donate is 100 and I'm going to select my commitment. And then I'll say, you know what, I want to commit for six months. So I would donate 100 pounds every month for the next six months. And if I click submit, you can see the summary is now available. So it can say, okay, the donated amount is 100. The total price is 100. You've committed to six times 100 and your recurring is monthly and you'll pay now 100. And here I can put in a uh, <coughs> billing email, so I can just say billing at donations.com and here I just have to enter my card number, so which is 42 okay, perfect and then I just simply click pay one more and then I just click click, um, click pay click pay and now we just wait for the submission to complete Alrighty, the submission is completed. Now here we go ahead and test um, in our billing area and see if any subscription has taken place. There you go, look at that, there's our subscription. You can see the status is now active and this is the submission header ID. Very, very easy. So here comes, we know that it will also show you my commitment number as well, which is six, which is what I've chosen. There's the ID, all good. But has it gone into Salesforce? Let's check. So if I refresh this, there you go. There's Joe Blogs. And if I go into Joe Blogs, this is all the data. This is the uh, submission ID that's come in. This is the donated amount. And this is for the next six months. 
And then if I go back into Stripe and have a look in my payment, you can see a payment has just come through for 100 pounds for the first month. So I know this is active, this is all good to go. You can also test, uh, check this data in the submissions as well. Wait for these to <coughs> load through. Okay, it's loaded and you can see it's completed. These are all the details. And by the way, um, just to give you an idea, you can map all of these fields directly into Salesforce. Um, I haven't mapped many and because if, if we just did this, we'd be here all day and I just want to re make it really, really short uh, and sort of get to the point. You can really map any of these fields back into Salesforce um, and you're good to go. And you can see the status is active and you're all good to go and they can even stop the subscription as well. Now, if you're saying, okay, well, every time will the record get created every time? The answer is yes for now because that's what we've set up. However, you can even set it up to update the existing. For example, if you have a counter like I do, so for example, my counter here will be six months, right? So if I just quickly cancel, my counter here will be six months. And you could simply, every month you get a payment uh, created you can create either a child record based on the submission ID. So you can just say Salesforce integration push, but instead of create upon a payment, you'll just say update and your condition will be, I don't know, you can be like, um, for example, you can just say, if I can do this. Um, okay, let's say you can just say like account ID equals submission ID. And that way you can just apply it and then if not found any match, it will create the record for you. And that's how every month when the payment has come through, the system will go, okay, yep, that's the account ID for that submission ID. And then it will go ahead and update any fields that you have available uh, or you want to update based on uh, payments. You can even say actually uh, payment number two and then status could be succeeded or failed and then go from there on. So that's how it's done. That's how you push um, recurring payments uh, into Salesforce. Thank you for watching this video.